Today we're going to do our second part of our uh, stock function in the numbers application. What I've done, we're going we're gonna to work off of our other worksheet that we went over in the last video. Uh, so what I did here is I took the symbols for Apple, GM, Ford, and Tesla. Down on the left side, I put price per share, number of shares, total investment, current price, current price times the number of shares, profit or loss, capital gains tax, and net. Now, the price per share is just a number that I filled in. The number of shares obviously is the same. I just something I just put in for demonstration purposes. So, total investment. Our total investment is a calculation that is our price per share here times the number of shares. So my initial investment in Apple is $50,000. The current price, how we get that current price, if you remember from our previous video, we're using the stock function. Stock B1, which is here. Now, what this is, we talked about before, this is an absolute reference. It's preserving the row. We don't want to preserve the column because we want, as we copy this over to these other three cells, we want it to be relevant to GM, Ford, and Tesla. But what it's doing now in the stock formula, it's going out to Yahoo Finance and getting the current price. So whenever you recalculate this spreadsheet, it'll get the current price and, and display it in your spreadsheet. The next is our, show you the formula here. It is the current price times the number of shares, giving us our current value, okay? Profit and loss, this formula, this is pretty straightforward stuff. I'm sure you're more than familiar with this. So this is taking our current value here minus our initial investment. There you go. Next is our capital gains tax. Now, this formula is taking what I've termed profit or loss times this absolute reference. Now, notice this is different. This is preserving the row and the column. So if you look at this, you'll see that it's F1. Well, F1 is right up here, this 15%. And I haven't checked the current tax laws, but I believe the capital gains tax is capped at 15%. So if you put that in there, and then as we copy this over to these other cells, it will reference this 15%. It will not change. Our net is merely the difference between the profit and loss less our capital gains tax. So once you have all of that in, now you will put in here and hold your shift key down, copy down, bring your cursor over to the yellow dot, drag it across, boom. All right, now, Notice here we have losses. I just want to let you know that you probably will not see uh, a negative tax, capital gains tax. But according to the current tax laws, um, you cannot take losses more than $3,000 per year. What does that mean? So here we lost $3,240. So to, to, and here we had a capital gains tax of 2,304 and $600. So you could sell this 500 shares of Apple, all right? And you would, they would apply a $2,000 capital gains tax. And then you could also 
sell these, sell your Ford stock, and realize a loss of 3000 So the net effect on your tax returns would be zero. You, you wouldn't be hit with any capital gains. All right. So part of what I'm trying to do with this spreadsheet is to show you you can track stocks and uh, maybe aid your financial person to say, look, I want to sell some of this to make up for some of my losses. All right. And um, I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, give us a like and we'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast.